How's it going, Teal Boys? It is week one of our fourth year here at Coastal. We have a tough game to start this season up against the preseason number 17 in Notre Dame. The Fighting Irish are an A+, and they're favored to win, but we made improvements as well over the offseason. We were either a B or a B- last year. We're up to a B plus here for Grayson's senior season. I think that we could do okay this year. I don't know if we'll win, you know, the, the games that we won last year, but I don't know if we'll lose the games that we lost. Uh, hoping to at least run it back to the conference championship. But this first game of the season in week one will be a great litmus test to see what this team has in store. Now, before we get into the game, I'm going to run through a couple of the plays in our playbook so that you can see the absurdity. Now, some of them will be coming out, including this one. I call it the encroacher. So you can see Grayson McCall is lined up 30 yards downfield. And if we snap the ball, it teleports to him. Um, it instantly ends the play as a false start if he's back there. But if we run this one normally, uh, when they break the huddle, as Grayson's trying to run 30 yards downfield to get to his spot, he runs into the defense and the defense gets called for an encroachment. So no matter what, when we run a play from this formation, there's a five yard penalty. It just depends on who it's on. But this one's going to be taken out. You guys will recognize this play. I've shown it off already on the channel, but not with Coastal. It is the Philly special. Uh, first time we're running it with the team. It doesn't work out too well. Let's give it another shot. Uh, this is definitely a situational play, especially because the game recognizes Grayson as a receiver. So it's not like he's just going to go completely uh, unguarded, but maybe it has a chance. We also have a couple of plays from this formation, just so it's not only the Philly special, but uh, one of them is this attempted a dive play. Uh, it goes straight to the running back and they try to take off. It doesn't work perfect, but it could work. We also just straight up have a pass. That's a different motion than I was expecting, but uh, yeah, it's possible. Hey, look at that. Grayson with a touchdown reception. Could come in handy. Another weird one that we have is what I call spin to win. Look at the play art. Bed good. <laughs> Literally runs in a circle and then goes downfield. I'm not sure we'll have the blocking to be able to see the full route, but you can see him spinning in a circle and, uh, well, he came down with it that time. But yeah, if you just watch Bedgood on this play, you'll see him just continue to run in his circle and then he heads downfield. So if the blocking holds up, it could be a really good play. Uh, I don't know how it's going to work in a game situation, though. From the dip formation, I have two weird plays that don't work properly yet, but we'll get there first is the beautiful wide receiver reverse. Again, I don't know how it'll work with this team, uh, but you dump, dump it off to Bedgood. And once I get the blocking scheme down, I think this could actually work very well in the game. Uh, I just don't exactly have the, the blocking assignments worked out properly. And also that can happen. This is a kind of a weird one. Number 62, our left tackle gets to run the ball. It is technically a legal play because uh, it's tossed to him behind the line of scrimmage. It's completely fine. Uh, it just doesn't work right. Again, blocking, the pitch can go wrong. Maybe I get it to work one day. I would love to use it as like a play where fourth and goal with inches to go, it could work. But uh, this is the, the worst success rate I've seen with it yet. Normally the, the toss works properly, but right now it just seems like a play to uh, create turnovers. Uh, one more time. There we go. We got the ball that time. So if the blocking holds up again, you know, maybe maybe it could be useful. It's a fun one. I like this play a lot. You can see bed good on kind of a whip route, but it's a little bit deeper so that uh, the route itself works very well if we throw it with the right timing, but uh, it's a little bit further off the line. So just kind of a more complicated out route. Uh, I think that this one could work really well against defenses, and uh, I think it works both against the zone and a man, so... As long as our receiver holds onto the ball and I don't make a terrible read, it could be good for positive yards every play. Now, here's a fun one that has been seen in college football in the past. We uh, we go with the conga line kind of out of the pistol with a fullback and two running backs in front. You really just are able to build up a nice head of steam before getting to the line. I'm not sure how well this will uh, work all the time, but so far it seems like it's pretty solid and maybe it could be a very useful uh, formation for us. This one is a weird one. This is the one that is not going to be in the playbook. This is the one we call the Neutron Star. You can see it only looks like we have three players on the field, but when we snap the ball, an explosion of human mass will occur, and then they'll block for our fullback. <laughs> it's such a bizarre play. Uh, one player usually gets stuck not moving. <laughs> I just had to make it because it's hilarious to see them all explode out from one point. 
I mean, what's not to love about this? Look at you snap the ball and they just erupt from one another and then just start running out and finding somebody to block. If you're the other defense, this has got to be terrifying to see this m like mass of humans just like merge into each other. The intimidation factor is off the charts. The last one that's kind of fun here is uh, a pretty popular one, the Spider 2Y Banana. Uh, I'm not sure if we'll be able to run it properly, but it exists, and if the pass is made properly, ooh, Logan Malton could be having some successful catches with this one. One more time. He's open. Pass is there. Kind of works. Now, I'm going to remove the broken plays, of course, but i just like to show you guys what's possible with the... Uh, play creation tool let's go ahead and do some scouting before we play this game and, and see what we can get recruiting wise i'm curious to see what we can pick up um i'm hoping that we find a few gems here we didn't find a whole lot the first batch of scouting but it's starting pretty solid Corey owens a decent looking free safety pretty quick decent coverage although i prefer his zone coverage to be higher Caleb Ford, not a, oh my gosh, yeah, pretty solid looking corner, 93 speed, 94 acceleration, not very strong, can't tackle, but his coverage is pretty solid, um, and his play recognition isn't too bad either, so as long as he doesn't have to tackle somebody in open field, he wouldn't be too terrible, can we find somebody that's actually good, okay, there's another corner that's going up, again, the secondary and both lines are what we're really looking for, and maybe Billy Gray here, the tackle, that could be very useful, Pretty solid blocking all around. Kevin West here. Decent looking athlete. Uh, D tackle. Okay, maybe that's Kevin West. Sometimes, man, this scouting thing is all sorts of weird. We've got Matt Brigham, who is nothing. And here's one that I thought was a funny name. I don't know if he'll actually be a good player, but we've got Brock Hampton. <laughs> the athlete, 67 overall. Not a jump, but goes up to, to a 69. Uh, maybe we'll we'll pick him up for the memes. Last two guys to scout. We don't expect a whole lot. Will Brooks, yeah, goes down to a 65 overall. And Jason White, the wide receiver, goes down to a 62. He's coming off the board immediately. That's that's not even worth looking at. And I think that we're going to be really, really picky this season. So if we're not already in the lead with some of these players that are really bad, they're coming off the board immediately. It's not worth uh, spending time or effort to pick up somebody who's never going to see the field. So we'll just get rid of a few guys there. And I'm just going to be really aggressive and say that I want everybody on this class to be above 70 overall. I know that that might be a little bit picky, and it might not be realistic, but we're going to go for it anyways. I've refilled the board with a couple of players that need scouting. Three centers, two guards. Let's see. Will any of them be good enough for us? So far, so good. As long as you're over 70. Okay, Charlie Dahl is coming off the board. Get out of here. Todd McKinley, a gem. We don't find a whole lot of them this season, so I love to see that. And Matt Billings... Not a gem, but up to 78 overall. So some solid offensive linemen found there. Let's go ahead and see what we've got going on with uh, the top players on our board. See if there's anybody that really likes us. And uh, let's just start from, I mean, 70 or 82 overall for a strong safety. This is actually insane. Uh, number one strong safety in the country. And we don't have a chance. Look at our bonus points. 155 to Ohio State's 290 and Notre Dame's 300. We'll give him 700 points for a week to see. Who knows, maybe they just don't like him, but uh, I got to imagine that that's like almost a waste of 700 points. In fact, we don't need to give him 700 points because we'll find out if it is worth it next week. Uh, Mike Shelby seems like it could be possible. We'll give him the points. Aaron Jenkins is a stretch, but potentially possible. So, uh, you know, we just have to hope that these guys don't care a whole lot about some of the, uh, the guys on their boards and that we're able to swoop in and pick a few of them up, but... Right now, not looking great for us in terms of some of the incredible players, but we only need to pick up a couple, and then we could be looking really, really solid for next season. So that's our easy recruiting done. Uh, let's check out our ESPN preseason polls. Maybe we'll check out the preseason All-Americans, and then we'll get into the game. North Carolina is number one. No surprise there. They had a pretty solid season. Uh, no surprise with the rest of this, except Oregon's actually... I mean, they had a pretty disappointing year, but they're number three, LSU at four, Texas at five, Stanford, our defending national champs are down there at six, and rounding out the top 10, Oklahoma, Washington, Ohio State, and Alabama, who plays uh, a conference game week one. I tried to fix this. It got cut out uh, when I messed up the recording in the off-season video, but I set it so that the conferences shouldn't be playing 
conference games, at least the Power 5 ones, until Week 3. So I don't know if that just didn't save or what, but they're opening up against number 18, South Carolina. And where are we ranked? We know that we're not top 25, but where are we? And I guess we'll see what our overall is. We're not top 30, are we top 40? No love here. No love at all. We made it to the ACC Conference Championship, and they put us at 45. We're a 90 overall team. How about that? That's our B-plus with a 93 offense and an 88 defense. That is fantastic. And, you know, I got to say, if we can beat Notre Dame Week 1, we should skyrocket up towards the top 25. 90 overall, though. That's a, that's a big milestone to reach. I'm loving that. How's our Heisman watch looking preseason? Uh, I have no idea how to say this name. Bijan Robinson? I feel like that may, might be it, but I apologize if that's wrong. Uh, Spencer Radler from Oklahoma is up there. So is Marcus Major from Oklahoma. Uh, John Reese Plumley, the LSU quarterback. And, of course, Pat Garwa the third, the man who slaughtered us in the conference championship game, the running back from Boston College, sitting there at the bottom of this list so far. He's going to have a good season no matter what. Barring a big injury, there I just don't see how he wouldn't do well. Uh, okay, Mason Shelton in his senior season at only 83 overall is a preseason All-American. So is Aaron Diggs in his senior year. So we have a couple of defensive players, which is good because our defense is the lower rated of our two. Any preseason second teamers? No. How about the All-ACC? We got to have something. Grayson, maybe second team. I mean, he's pretty solid. Shelton and Diggs there. Uh, okay, Logan Malden is a second team all ACC tight end. Okay, there we go. Rashad Cheney, Charles Steele making it up there, and so is uh, Miles Baker. So, decent amount of second team all uh, ACC players. Two All Americans, though, is great news. Well, let's get into this one. Notre Dame. Oh, they're very good. This is going to be a very tough start. No shaky bars against the 99 overall team, though. That's fantastic. Uh, and their defense isn't their best unit, so we could be looking okay. And we're at home for this one. So trying to keep the home winning streak alive. What should we give Notre Dame? We could go with the bowl, which puts the names on the back. But some of you guys get really triggered when I do that. Uh, we could really, uh, I don't know. We could, we could make them look real weird. Maybe we put them in the uh, the green jersey. I, I mean, like, it's not traditional Notre Dame, but I do really like this, so we're going to do it. A little colorway game to start the season as we'll come in with a brand new offense. Hopefully it works. I honestly have no idea how good it's going to be. Top three players in the 90s this year, 93 to Grayson, 92 to Bedgood, and 91 to Rashad Chaney. Uh, all pretty, pretty solid players with uh, a lot of expectations this season. Uh, they're looking good. A center, a running back, and a tight end, all 96 or above. Uh, their offense is going to be very, very good. I don't expect the defense to get any stops, but we can hope for the best still. So back in Conway for Grayson McCall's final season as a shot to clear. Oh, how is this going to go for us? Notre Dame goes tails on the toss. We will win it. We're going to elect to kick this one off. We'll give it to the green jerseyed fighting Irish and see what we can do. Well, we know Frederick is going to be a little bit better of a kicker this year as well. So let's see. Can he get it to the end zone? Kind of. Better than it was last year, which is great news. And let's see if we can do anything. Okay. Not the worst, but not the best. Let's get the defense out here and get underway. Now, one thing that is going to be important to note for this season is we're turning fatigue back on. I want to see uh, our backups have to play. I want to see more subs on both sides. So it can get a little bit weird near the end of the game, but I think it makes it a little bit more realistic. That way we don't have Reese running every single time. You know, that sort of deal. Charles Steele got knocked over. They put it on the ground and somehow only got a yard with their 97 overall running back on first down. Definitely going to expect a pass on second and nine. We'll see if I'm right there. Stepping back. It's a slip screen. Can we get there? Kale Mackey, first play of his second season. It's a big one. A loss of two. It's third and long here. So we just have to stop him on this third and long, hoping for the best. What will they do? They do step back to pass. And, oh, Mason Shelton, the preseason All-American, getting in there and breaking the pass up on the first drive. So the 99 overall offense can't get it done. Three and out for Notre Dame. We're going to be able to feel this. I forgot to change uh, who's returning the ball. I guess it's Dion Fountain. That might have to be changed here. But man, look at the field position starting from just outside midfield. So the first drive for Grayson 
in his final year leading the team. We're going to hand it off, and Beasley lost the yard. Again, we're going to be going kind of running back by committee, but C.J. Beasley getting the start. Not a great start, though. Second 11, we will step back to pass. Again, Grayson should be a better passer this year. We'll see if that holds true. Accurate on his first attempt, though, and it gives us a third and medium. This is four down territory as far as I'm concerned as I've come out in the Wildcat on accident. Well, third and six, we're going Wildcat read option. It's handed off to Bennett, who, uh, okay, got past this man, Brayden. I don't know if you guys saw that. There was a linebacker who just, like, got near him and then jumped. What the heck was this man doing on that play? He gets kind of stuck on the line, guys. But then he just gives it a little leap. <laughs> That's goofy. I think the Wildcat could actually be very, very useful for us this season as first down, tough throw to make. Jackson, the freshman, was open, but I'm late getting it there, and it's picked off on Grayson's second throw of the season. You know, that's one of the big keys for this year is turnovers, and it's not a great start. Good uh, eyes from the safety there. Probably read it the whole way. So that doesn't go the way that we want it, but uh, maybe we can stop him again. Shelton trying to get a stop. Can't get it, but Charles Steeler is there to finish it off. And I think we're going to just continue to get them in these passing situations. So hopefully the secondary holds up. Although this looks like a run. It is handed off out towards the edge. Steele got to him. Not enough for the first down. It's third and two. We're going to bring a lot, of, a lot of pressure here. Big blitz. No way that I'm letting them run for this if I have the choice. It's third and two. Calling it a run to the right. We might be completely wrong. It's a draw. Baker is there. And we get the stop. Finch. Ends up bringing him down, and it's another three and out for the Notre Dame offense. Leaving Dion back there to continue to return at this point. Uh, maybe we've become a defensive powerhouse. We do have uh, an 88 overall defense, I think. Flag on the play. I imagine this one's coming backwards. That's a shame. So the good field position looks a little bit worse. As we're backed up to our own 27 and on first down, I'm going to just continue to throw the ball. And tough throw here. Oh, Mobley almost came down with that. I thought that was intercepted for sure. If we're being honest, I'm not doing a great job here in helping Grayson's confidence with some of the throws we're deciding to make. But, uh, you know, he'll find it. He'll find it. Third and seven. Obviously passing here. And bed good. Oh, my gosh. That dude knew it the entire way. You know, one thing I'm noticing, their secondary is so tall, but two turnovers and two drives. Well, I guess we're not winning anything this season because we can't hold on to the football. At least no spectators are going to know who we're playing, and Notre Dame won't get any recognition because uh, we've made them wear some hideous uniforms. They're still not moving the ball well. Jordan Johnson only got a yard on that one. Second and nine. They're going to step back to throw again. Guys are open over the middle. Okay, we got another stop. It's another third down. Can we hold them? Might have made a mistake here. I honestly didn't think they had a running back, so I switched away from uh, from our big blitz, and, well, they made us pay. Here they go again. Play action. I've left my man wide open. That's going to be a big gain. Shelton needs to get the tackle. He does, but they pick up 12 in the process. Uh, I just keep getting burned right now. Bringing the smoke on this first down. They go play action. Somebody has to be open. Quarterback scrambling. Somehow just sitting in the backfield. Finally, we get to Brendan Clark, and he loses four yards on the sack. Kale Mackey's the one that eventually does get there. Let's try to keep it going. Second and 14. They step back to pass, and looking for it. Reed with the SWAT. Oh, my gosh. Close to an interception. Again, our guys need to you know, get some stick them on the gloves. Gives us a third and 14 to work with, though, and maybe for the third drive in a row, our defense can hold. Expecting the pass, they will step back, and the quarterback over the middle has his man. Mackey gets the tackle. It's fourth and two. I don't think they'll go for this. They will indeed settle for a field goal, so the defense has done a phenomenal job. I mean, they weren't given a whole lot of space to work with on this drive as the kick is good, but somehow we're only down three with two interceptions thrown on the game getting bailed out by the defense. Let's try our first kick return of the season. See if this can go anywhere for us. Bedgood needs to set us a good lead block and maybe we can again get good field position. And oh, that's beautiful. Dion Fountain's not going to have the speed to take it to the house, but he takes it 46 yards nonetheless. Now if we can just hold on to the ball, I think we can take the lead. 
Well, let's try to run it here on first down. See what we got going on. Out of the conga line. Good three yards for CJ Beasley. And that's going to be the end of the first quarter. So, end to one, honestly, not as good as it could be for us, but it could be a whole lot worse with the interceptions that we've thrown. Defense has been phenomenal. Offense just needs to kick it into gear. It's a little bit interesting not having just one solid running back to rely on this season. So, I'm curious what we can do. CJ's having a decent start. Uh, what is he at? Four, well, four carries for eight yards is pretty rough, actually. This hasn't been working well for us, but I am going to go to the air on this third down. And on third and four, I am running for my life. And we're going to scramble because the, I already know their coverage is really good. I don't need to throw up a 50-50 ball against these giant defensive backs. I'll be trying to avoid turnovers the entire rest of this game. Hopefully we don't uh, start the season minus three with that. But hey, that's a good dive up the middle for six yards. Unfortunately, we do need to pass in this game, so hopefully it works well. There's Logan Malden, holds on to it through the contact. Just uh, played on the safety, being so deep in his zone. We get it there early, and so that's a good second uh, catch or, or pass completion for Grayson. Truthfully, a little bit disappointing that he is 2 of 5, but, you know, can't complete them all. Unless you're uh, our opponents, they seem to do pretty good with that. CJ with another 3-yard pickup. We are getting near uh, the end zone. And if we were being honest with ourselves, I'm going to settle for a field goal if we need to. Second and seven from the Conga line. Uh, okay, that play's a little bit broken. Grayson doesn't hand it off and we lose a yard. <laughs> One of the problems with making your own plays and your own formations is that sometimes they don't work out. This play was created by the CFB revamped team. It's called the halfback red zone corner. We are in the red zone. We do have a halfback. Can we find Beasley towards the corner? No. Lucky that one wasn't picked off. Threw it into trouble coverage, and we're going to be settling for a field goal. It's only a 32-yarder, so we shouldn't have any problems getting this one up. Uh, McIntyre's in. That should be Frederick, so I guess a couple of depth chart things that we need to fix, but we get the points regardless, and we tie this game up. 350 left in the half. Let's see what we can uh, get out of the defense once again. I would love to get another stop. If we can be tied or have the lead going into the locker rooms, that would be best case scenario since we do get the ball to start the third quarter. I'm expecting to see a run on first down. And yep, there is an option out towards the edge. The blocking was good. Baker does get the tackle. I got to say already our tackling seems to be somewhat improved from the start of last year. The big problem definitely is going to come from, uh, you know, not being able to cover these guys when we bring pressure. There's a wide open man. Diggs can't get the tackle either, so so much for that. Uh, they cross midfield way too easily on that 17-yard pickup. When in doubt, though, keep blitzing. We're bringing the pressure on first down, seeing what we can get out of this one. And I'm not sure that we have enough guys to cover what we need, but if the pressure gets there, it doesn't matter. It's an eight-yard loss on the sack. Mason Shelton got in there and broke it up alongside Kale Mackey, and uh, that is a fantastic play. So second and long, we can expect them to pass. Now maybe we see a screen, or maybe they just run it up the middle with a draw. Terrible, terrible decision-making there, and we get them into third and long now. So we just have to hold them from getting the first down and the defense should get another stop as... Well, we don't get either of those. So that's a bit of a shame. Michael Mayer, 18 yards. Ah, you can't let a tight end run that route on you. Try to bring the blitz again. See what happens for us. As up the middle, they go with the... Well, they went with the option. We hit the quarterback once. He breaks the tackle. And then the second time we hit him, he gets the pitch out. So they got nine yards when they should have lost two. Bit disappointing so far. This is going to be a handoff up the middle, and it gets stuffed immediately. Nothing doing there. Third and uh, four here. Another chance to get off the field for the defense. I'm going to expect a pass, if I'm being honest. I'm not sure it'll work, though. Third and four. Who he checks to the sideline. They do pass it, and it's over the middle. Of course, somebody's wide open. Our man coverage is pretty atrocious. They've got a first down just outside the 10. All right, another first down from the 11 or 12. Can we hold him to a field goal? That's our only hope. Oh, that's not great, though. He just held on through a massive hit, and he's at the two-yard line. As always, the last thing that I want to have happen is for them to run for these. As Can we get it, Shelton? Met him at the line. Is able to hold him up and get the tackle. Third and one. 
Expecting a pass, if I'm being honest here, on third and one. What will they do? Notre Dame does step back to pass. Guys have to be open, and in the back of the end zone, he came down with that. We had three guys in the area. None of them could get there in time, and it looks like it's a touchdown for Notre Dame. I'm surprised he was able to stay in at the back of the end zone there, but uh, yeah, it looks pretty clean to me. Very disappointing we didn't get off the field there. Well, we've made the chains and our freshman uh, Marquise Jackson now back to return. Definitely the fastest guy on the team. They kick it real deep, but I'm going to bring it out anyways and hope for the best. And Marquise, a chance to show the speed. Ooh, he got a lot out of that from starting at the back of the end zone. Minute nine, we don't have a lot of time to work with, so we will be passing. And let's hope that we can pass well. Quick one to Logan Malden, but it won't stop the clock, so we got to go in the hurry up. Hoping that we can find somebody deep. I'm actually going to send Jackson just on a little go route. And uh, he might have been open. Right bumper was open, but it found Mobley. That's not who he threw it to. And I'm going to take it. We get 21 yards out of the play. Grayson very inaccurate there. We're going to take our first time out as well. It would be big if we could tie this up. But it's going to need some solid, solid passing on the rest of this drive. And... I see guys open. I just don't feel comfortable making the throw with how we've been passing so far today. So we'll scramble and we'll get out of bounds for another first down. First and 10 again, looking to the air. They're bringing pressure. Can we get it off? There's Beasley. He held onto it through the contact and broke a tackle enough to get the first down to stop the clock again. That was a terrifying one is, uh, oh, they looks like they want to bring pressure again. So I guess we're going to audible to his screen. Not what I would prefer, but if it works, it works. Beasley. Oh, yeah, not working. We're taking our second time out. That was kind of yikes. I saw the pressure coming and just kind of panicked with the audible. Hopefully we don't make that mistake. I'm looking for Logan Malden corner of the end zone here. Is he going to be open? It's a tough one. Logan come. Oh, wow. He came down with that through the contact. This man is a monster. First receiving touchdown of the season for him. Uh, wow. That's a big time play with 21 seconds left in the half to tie this one up. Well, Frederick now can try to put this one deep. They will be forced to return it, which is good because it'll burn some clock. But one timeout. Will they have enough time to do anything? Uh, well, we held them inside the 20, so I don't think they have a whole lot of hope here. We are, of course, not a good team when it comes to uh, giving up points late in the half. Expecting a run on first down, they do hand it off. And, uh-oh, they're going to be taking their time out and going for this, probably. Like, maybe in the hurry up. 14 seconds left. And no, they are content just letting it to go uh, into the half here. So I'm fine with it as well. 10 all at the break. We get the ball to start the third quarter. Our defense has been pretty phenomenal. Almost got the stop there on third and goal. We've held them to a field goal besides that and a bunch of stops, and their defense is really, you know, keeping them in it with interceptions. So, I don't know. We, we toned back the interceptions this half. We're looking really solid. Let's see what Jackson can do on this return, though. Hopefully it's not as deep in the end zone. Yeah, this is much more returnable. Again, if the blocking is there, this man has some wheels. I think he's like at 97 speed, 93 acceleration. So you can see it, man. If he gets up in space, he's going to be gone potentially the fastest player that this team has seen yet as we're going to try the bubble screen and the blocking not great good enough for two yards should have been able to get more out of that second and eight let's hand the ball off we, we need a nice solid drive here to start the half that's not great though should have cut it more inside uh third long here for us Passing hasn't been great so far this game. Hopefully the timing route is. Yeah, Mobley. Okay, he shook off the one tackle. Didn't have time to get going, but got us nine yards. Keeps this opening drive alive. Grayson now 9 of 13 through the air. So pretty much just bounced back uh, after the rough start. And that's a great carry for Beasley. I think uh, five yards on that one. Still only 23 on the game, but maybe we'll get it going. Bed good. Bedgood coming in motion to start this second and five pass attempt. The pressure came real early. A is wide open. Of course, it's Logan Malden, and he's got us with a little bit of stiff arm cheese across the 25-yard line. This man is unstoppable. Honestly, might be the goat of the team. So we'll step back to pass again. Tough throw. We find CJ Beasley and continue to move down the field marching towards the end zone we're gonna hand this one off up the middle 
That's got us our first down across the 15. Uh, a touchdown here would be so crucial. Who knows if we'll be able to set this one up properly. The fake sweep, handing it off to Beasley. And CJ had a gap and a half there. And goes one play for another first down. This time, a first and goal inside the five. Well, let's go goal line against goal line. We're a little ways out, but we'll hope for the best as we'll see. The Wisconsin power to CJ Beasley. How's the blocking going to be? Not great. We got a yard, they say, but that's not going to be enough. Try it again on this one. A little read option. That one's going to get handed off to CJ. And Oh, he doesn't have it, but third goal. I think we have to be in fullback dive range. If we don't manage to pick it up here. Oh my gosh, they are stacked over the center. Very worrisome for JJ Barr. His first carry of the season. Not enough. They say he couldn't quite get it. His The ball got stuck behind a lineman. It's fourth and goal. Well, let's hope that Grayson doesn't fumble this one. It's a QB sneak looking to dive over the line to take the lead against Notre Dame. And well, he doesn't need to dive. Got a good enough push from the center. And we take our first lead of this game. 220 left in the third. That was a long drive for us. All right. Well, if the defense can continue to be as strong as they have been in this game, we might be able to open this lead up a little bit. And our special teams has been pretty solid, holding them to the 20 on multiple occasions. Came out in this cover two. I want to blitz, though. First and 10. We got to bring the pressure. It is a handoff. Rashad Chaney and Kale Mackey get out there and stop him for a loss. That was a great last-second decision, though. The biggest question mark for our defense remains our coverage, though. They expect them to start to pass it a little bit more. Second and 10. Now they go with the option, and Clark loses more yards. Quit trying the option, Notre Dame. It's not working well enough. Third and long now. Hoping on this one that the defensive line gets a good push and pressures Brendan on this play. They'll step back to pass. Looking for it. Oh my gosh, the out route is wide open. I don't know what Diggs is even thinking. He was a mile away from his man on that play. I've been trying to run that man on the third and long situations, but it's really not working out so far this season. So we might have to stick with the zone. The run defense has been phenomenal so far, though. I will say our linebacker core is having a good game so far. Mackey, Shelton, and Steele have just been dominating as Sturm Finch gets involved there and forces another third and long. Even if Notre Dame manages to score on this drive, we are not making it easy for them, thankfully. They step back to pass here, and Steele gets in there and gets the swat. Oh my gosh, our linebackers might be top tier this year. So Jackson gets to go back to return his first punt with 40 seconds left in the third and a touchdown on this drive. Might be enough for us to see a W in the win column after week one. We'll see. How's the blocking on this one? Oh my gosh. Just the, the kicker to beat it looks like and he's going to be forced out of bounds but a 38-yard return on the punt. First and 10. Let's uh, keep this ball on the ground as much as possible on this drive. CJ Beasley really starting to get some movement going that's a good first down 49 yards for him I'm not gonna lie I was very tempted to run the flea flicker there but I don't think I'm ready to do it quite yet maybe if we have a two score lead I would think about it let's just continue to run let this clock burn out and let's get into the fourth quarter oh man so the end of three we have the ball driving most likely here in field goal range 17-10. Can we make it two scores? Now, a lot of you guys have been asking for this to become a daily upload series. I don't know if I can guarantee you that. That's a lot for me. Um, but if this one gets, uh, let's say, 100 likes in the first day, we'll upload back to back. We get into week two, and let's just start this, wow, this fourth quarter with a first and goal. That might be worth a like. <laughs> Grayson started the game like two of five or something. 12 of 16 now, really stepping it up since the interceptions. And the running is great. Oh, accidentally made an extra little cut with CJ. Great four-yard pickup, though. We're going to try to catch him off guard with the fullback dive from a little bit further out this time. On second and goal, and JJ, oh my gosh, the agility of the fullback to just, you know, dodge and dive around in the backfield there to find the gap. And find the opening for the touchdown. It's 24 to 10. With the NCAA expanding to an eight-team playoff this season, I got to say, I like Coastal's odds of making it in. Maybe not as a conference champion, but 
definitely is an at-large bid. I just think if the defense can play anything like this in every single game that we play this season, we've got no reason not to think that we would be able to do this. Not missing a crazy amount of tackles. We're deflecting passes. We're getting hits in the backfield. All around, it's just great to see. Second and four, again, bringing a blitz. This is going to be a handoff towards the edge. And there it is, Durham Finch hitting him in the backfield for a loss and forcing another third down. Our defense is just playmakers right now as we're trying to get it done. Steel couldn't quite get the stop there. They needed five and they got six. Great play call from the Notre Dame Fighting Irish on that one. Can we get him here? Plenty of time for Clark. We brought pressure. It finally gets to him. Coverage was able to hold up and we get the sack. It was Charles Steele that managed to finally get back there, which means I think all three of our starting linebackers have a sack in this game, which is phenomenal. Third and 10 now. Just got to hope that the coverage holds up on this one. I've gone back to the man, which has burned us before in these situations, and they call the screen, and Kale Mackey gets in there for another sack. It's fourth and 20. We are blazing these guys right now. So Marquise Jackson with another attempt at the return. Very, very good one his first time out. If the blocking holds here, maybe he can get to the corner. Just got to avoid the penalties, but this man is a speed demon. There's the flag. It's going to be on uh, number 21 there. It's going to be a clipping. Yep, it happened a little bit too late. Couldn't avoid it. JT Killen gets called for it. We lose 15 yards at the end of the run. All righty, we got a two-score lead. It's the fourth quarter. We're going to try some trickeration. A fly sweep to Bedgood this time. And if it does anything, it didn't. It lost two yards. But we're going to go right back into the formation and run the flea flicker. I'm not super confident that this is going to work, especially from uh, the short side of the field. But we're going to try it anyways. Hopefully, we have a chance to get it off. Oh, my gosh. Beasley couldn't get the ball back to Grayson. We're lucky to have the ball after he put it on the turf. Well, we're not going back to that. <laughs> Third and 17. Got to look for something deep. And we're going to throw it up. Uh-oh. Ball's underthrown. But Marquise Jackson was uh, noticing it. And the safety kept running. No reason that that should have been completed. But here we are. I feel like two minutes left in the game. Up two scores. We should now just keep the ball on the ground. There's no reason to go away from it. And there's C.J. Beasley up the middle again for 12 yards. Notre Dame's having to take their timeouts. This is great. 2.09 left now. The running continues to work. They're just missing the tackles. We were stumbling forward the whole time. And still got enough to force them to take their last timeout. A first down here could be enough to end the game. A touchdown almost certainly would be. And Beasley didn't. Oh, no, he did. They gave him the spot. It's first and goal. We're going to let this clock start to burn. So unless a miracle happens for Notre Dame, we're going to open up this season with a win against the Fighting Irish, the number 17 team in the country. And yeah, they are just falling apart at the seams. I mean, to be fair, their defense has been on the field for a long time this game. And with the fatigue on, it means they're going to be getting really tired. Um, I mean, our time of possession has been off the charts, I think, in this one. Alabama manages to beat South Carolina. So 17 and 18 will fall this week. And I expect this to be the last time, but Frederick puts it deep and our special teams unit can try and get the stop. And then the defense can try to end this one. I'm sure they're going to be passing, maybe opening us up for an interception or a sack. First and 10, they will stop, step back to throw. There's an out route wide open. Stokes almost got there. It's incomplete and uh, we'll take that. I would love to pick that off though. Second and 10 this time out. What can we do as they will step back to pass again? And oh my gosh, I saw the play coming. I just couldn't quite get there. So not enough to give up the first down, but it is third and inches. Really hoping this one doesn't backfire. We're going to bring pressure on this third down and get the stop. You got to tackle him. Two guys missing. He gets the first down. Oh my gosh, I played it perfect. We just finally couldn't tackle the game. That's pretty brutal, especially because we brought pressure. Forced them to make a tough throw, and it just doesn't work for us. And that time, he made the catch out of bounds. So the clock stops with 58 seconds to play, but I gotta say, it just kind of feels like our secondary is making them work a little bit harder this time around. Clark 
has a man open finally. I don't know how our coverage broke down so bad that nobody was near it, but I guess we give up a first down. See if a little bit of a blitz can work. Rushing five men. They're going to hand it off. Okay, you've got no timeouts. If you get tackled short of the line, that's just a waste of time. But, I mean, they got 16 yards out of the play. We're going to go corner blitz on this first down. See if the pressure can get to him um, all the time in the world for Clark. He goes over the top of Shelton, and he has a man diving into the end zone to catch that. Yeah, I don't think Shelton's going to be able to stop that ever. A little bit annoying. They get some garbage time points with 40 seconds left, but it's not going to be enough for them to win. So the onside kick team is out. They're going to be trying this one, and it's fielded by us, no problem. Dion's got it. Dion's ended the game, I think. We'll just knee this one out. So first in 10, we will take the knee, and that's going to be it. We come out with a 14-point win over Notre Dame. Their last touchdown comes in uh, garbage time as well, so... A fantastic start to the season. We threw two picks on the first, like, two drives with the offense, but, you know, it's a brand new offense. It's going to take us a little bit to get into it, and once we started going, we started going. A great way to start the season, a win over a ranked conference opponent. Grayson ends up as the player of the game, and uh, I'm excited for what we've got. Some strong linebackers, a decent defensive line, and our wide receivers look pretty dang good. So actually not as uh, bad on time of possession as I thought it was going to be. We do win the time of possession game, but I was expecting like us to have 15 or something. Only 12 and 40, only 1244 for us. We do beat them on first downs. They started so slow. That big pass at the end, uh, you know, allows them to take the lead on passing yards, but we held them to 32 on the ground. A ton of sacks. Uh, Kale Mackey with two and five tackles for loss. He was all over it in this one. I mean, just a, a good performance for the entire team today. Hopefully that's enough to maybe make them think about ranking us. We'll go ahead and advance the week. Next week we go on the road at Pitt. Hopefully looking for another win. Uh, you know, sometimes those road games get to us, but we did extend our home winning streak, I think, to four. So uh, Brook Stadium starting to get a little bit difficult for opponents to play in. After that game, we jump up to 26th. We were at 45. We are the first one left out of the polls uh, with 175 votes. Notre Dame and Arkansas drop out. Did we see anything else that was kind of crazy? Some top teams losing. Purdue loses to Cincinnati. We know that South Carolina lost to Bama, but nothing else besides that. So uh, a pretty solid start for us. Uh, I mean, if we beat Pitt, we should be ranked. So that's great news. And a little bit of love for us, I think, is, yeah, Kale Mackey is the ACC Defensive Player of the Week there in Week 1. Two sacks, five tackles for loss. We'll do that. Uh, already matched his sack total from last season. <laughs> it is uh, very close to beating his tackles for loss, and that's after one game. So a great, great start for us. We just need to start creating some turnovers as a defense, and I think we would be pretty unstoppable. We're favored to win here in our matchup against Pitt for Week 2, but unfortunately, that's going to have to wait until next episode. If you've made it this far into the video, thank you for watching. I appreciate it, and uh, if you're not subscribed to the channel but you want to know when more of these coastal games get uploaded, please feel free to subscribe. It's free to do, and it means the world to me. And while you're down there subscribing, head to the description where you'll find a link to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also links to my Twitter and our community Discord. And, well, you know, while you're down there as well, uh, maybe hit the, the like button. You know, again, 100 likes in the first day and we'll go back to back uploads. And, you know, maybe we just keep that going as a streak, a little incentive for you guys to get these videos out earlier. But regardless, again, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goodmaster. You guys are the Teal Boys, and wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. We'll see you later. Adios.